Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Norm's Friends. I'm David B., the readings guy. 603. I forget my number. 404. <laughs> I never use it, that's why. 603 404 9338. Text, email, mm -hmm. call, biffid, B I F F I D at yahoo.com. And Look, today, no hat, no jacket, I can actually say it's very comfortable in here today. Yeah. Right? And lo and behold, yet again, I'm fortunate to have the illustrious, fantastic, nationally known artist. Let them know who you are in case they Leonardo forgot. Leonardo da Vinci. <laughs> I just moved into town. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm Anthony Williams. Uh, <laughs> I am an artist here in Manchester. Uh, I've got my own show here, Art Expressions. And I brought a piece that I've been working on. In fact, I worked on it today <clears throat> on my show. And it's a little different to what I usually do, but I just want to show the progress and, and see what, what happens. I got some ideas, it's gonna be different. I'll explain it more later when I show it. All right. Mm -hmm. So today we can, well, the interesting, the interesting facts, sort of. I thought they were interesting. And there's more, but I only had enough time for, to do five of them. And the inspirational quote is a little different today because I got it. Where did I get it? I didn't. For some reason, when I, you know, I usually Google inspirational quotes and I always end up at the same site. Yeah. Today, I don't know what happened to it, so I ended up somewhere different, but I still like the quote. And then, as I was mentioning it to you earlier, have I got stories for you <laughs> <laughs> just from the past week. So we can get to this. We could tell stories. If you want. Sure. I'll All right. See. You got stories, right? Yeah. Do you? I can talk a little bit about the <clears throat> mural project coming up. That oh, good. Finally. Well, there's, I'll talk about it when we get there. All right. It's not easy. It's <laughs> lack of communication and uh, it happens. <laughs> that will certainly, that will certainly uh, string things along. All right. So. Let's get going with the uh, inspirational quote. Like I said, I couldn't, well, for some reason today, it didn't take me to the usual website where I get, what is it? What do I usually get? Roy, Roy, what's the guy's name that I get a lot of times for the inspirational quote? Roy, I forget. Anyway, here's the inspirational quote today, although I still kind of like it. Those who don't believe in magic will never find it. Hmm. I thought that was kind of cool. And that was, it's Ronald without an N. R-O-A-L-D. Rolled? Rolled Dow? Mm. Yeah, Rolled. All right, Rolled Dow. That's it. Mm -hmm. And so, and again, mm -hmm. today, interesting facts. Mm -hmm. Well, mm -hmm. I guess they are facts. A lot of people out there are going to be up in arms now, all the little babies. Before I get into this, I do this because, you, you know, it's like the Democrats. It's, I, they really do believe, they do, do treat their followers as dummies. Right? Look at, what's her name? Craig. She's <coughs> running for governor. They ask her about if she's for sanctuary cities or that type stuff. She doesn't, won't answer the question. Again, how dumb are people that that's acceptable to us? Because she has a D, they'll vote for her. Or because they have the Trump derangement syndrome. They hate Trump so much they've bought into that. Well, you know, they're addicted to Rachel, the, the uh, liar. <laughs> You know, but like that, that's what gets me. She won't answer the question in a low for It's the same thing with, she's out of Nashua. She's running for, is it Amy Custa? Annie Custa, what's her name? Oh, yeah, Annie. Annie Custa. She's another one. She won't answer the question. You know, so, <clears throat> something 
something has to happen. Something has to be done. It's a very difficult thing to try and figure out, but homeless, it is. It, here in Manchester, uh, I see more now. I mean, every year it just, there's more of them. Mm -hmm. And I had the idea, <clears throat> uh -huh. I'm gonna see if it works out. Listen to this one. I, I was teaching at the Senior Center Friday and <clears throat> Emily, one of the, uh, the ladies, the boss, she, she came over to me and she said, Anthony, I got somebody that wants to meet you and find out what you do here in your mm -hmm. class. And I had two students. Guess, uh -huh. who, guess who it was? Mayor. Good old. So the mayor comes over and shook well, his hand. And when was this again? Friday, last wow. Friday. Wow. So I was thinking of <clears throat> trying to get a hold of him before he forgets who I am. Uh -huh. And see if, him he, on. if he would come on Mary's show. Oh, yeah, oh, this one. Sure. See, see what he'll do because you have to put a. Some, think about it. You don't want to bring politics into it. You just want straight answers. And if you don't get the straight answers, and this guy provides pretty straight answers, he does have plans and they're in the works now. At least he's being honest about it, that he, he's going to do something. What exactly, I, I have no idea, but something has to be done. You can't have all these people every year, more and more of them, sleeping outside. Uh, that's, nobody should live like that. Ship them to Boston mm -hmm. and buy them a Charlie card and put them on the subway. They could sleep, yeah. there's, there's heat there mm -hmm. for them, or AC, whatever. Then they got all those platforms, you know, all the stations with all yeah. those benches. They can camp out there. It's so uh, agonizing to see these people. I mean, in it 2020, I, that's when I first saw them. And, and I didn't think too much about them, except, man, it's 22 degrees, and these people, they got to be freezing. It's 22 yeah. degrees. Not unless you're a polar bear. You know, then right. you'd be no big deal. <laughs> but a human being out there like that, forget it. But I'm hoping to have him on, introduce him and maybe try and, and talk, because he said he wouldn't mind talking to me again. I just don't want to be a pain. Uh, that's mm -hmm. why I don't want to approach it in a political manner. I want <clears throat> to, I'd love to have him on, because Mary is, is really concerned about the homeless, and some people don't care. I care, you know, I mean, that's horrible to be out on the street, not have any money, no nothing, and I know that they're, they're all different. Some have drug problems mm -hmm. they need to get taken care of. Some have mental issues they need to get taken care of. But something has to be done, and I remember when this guy was running for mayor, he said he it's got the plans and ideas, and he, he'll be consulting with different people that know the problem, mm -hmm. because yeah. it's deep-rooted. It, it really, it's it's deep-rooted. It's not like, oh, well, I'm a lazy bum, because that's not the truth. Some- Well, some of them. Right. Uh, but I just think that they, there's gotta be something done. You know, I mean, I I see help wanted signs everywhere. Yeah, everywhere. I just saw one on the way here on uh, Bridge Street. It's the same guy that he'll pay you at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. uh, he's out there with a big sign, and you know, let's go up. He's got work, <clears throat> so somebody's got to do it. 
I feel a little guilty sometimes when I go downtown. Why? Why? Because somebody will uh, give me that sad look and, do you have an extra dollar or some change? And I don't do that. I don't do it at all. I, I remember years ago, I was doing a mural on a corner of Elm and Mechanic, and it was there for 15 years, 60 feet long, 10 feet high. And I had just got it all penciled in. It was a big mural. Anyway, there was this guy that I knew because when I was drinking, I used to drink with him. So he came up and he goes, Anthony, can you, you know, can you loan me like five or ten dollars to get something to eat? And I said, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'm going to take a break at 12 noon. I've, I've got to get this mural yeah. going. And I'll buy you a meal. And he didn't want that. Well, he, no. he wanted to. Exactly. And I yeah. don't want to. I'm, I'm not Rockefeller. <laughs> I can't stand out there and hand out money to people because I feel sorry for them. There's some that that uh, brag about it. They had some on Facebook that this guy and his girlfriend were bragging about uh, not looking for a job. They said, or he said, I'm not that stupid. <laughs> You're so so that makes it look bad for everybody that really yeah. really needs it, but. You know, that, I think that'd be cool to have the mayor come on. I think it would. But, you know, I really don't ask politicians to come on here because you know the way I go on about Muslims. And right, and a politician comes on here, and what happens after they leave? Islamophobe, even though they want to kill everyone, and that's all right. But if you say something about it, then you're an Islamophobe. They're everything. I'll keep saying it. They're everything phobe. It's something you have to be very careful about. You, you know Jim and Mary St. Pierre, right? Yeah. Jim told me this last year, and he said it's still going on. At Walmart, they hired some Muslims. And when they feel like it, they can pull a rug out put it on the floor, and they all get on the yeah. rug and they pray when they want. But Jim said, well, what about Christians? And they said, yeah. no, can't. You know, if they called, they called the, uh, I forget the name of the uh, organization, but they'll take the case because, you know, or even Judicial Watch, if that's not discriminatory, it's against the Constitution. Tom Fitton. Yeah, I mean, if that's not discriminatory, I don't know what is, but that's what I mean. You, you know, people, it's satanic. I don't care what you say, it's satanic. But how do they keep progressing and progressing? They threaten you with death. They threaten you with torture. They threaten, you know, to, to cut you off from society. All this this stuff, and it works, and that's why people don't say anything. And But yet, you know... They'll talk to me about it, but they don't have the nerve to stand up and tell tell you what it is. It's just outright evil. I mean, it's it's a shame the way I, I look at it, Davis. Man and woman have been on this planet for close to six thousand years now, and religion for one section of the world, and then Christianity, and then. Hinduism and Buddhism, even though Buddha never proclaimed to be God, they worshiped right. him as if he was a God, but he never claimed that he was God. What Buddha was, and Confucius and all those people, were just very intelligent men yeah. that paid attention to the world and was giving advice, like, you know, there's Chinese proverbs and Chinese, it yeah. goes way back. But what gets me is that okay, if you want to practice Islam, do it. But why do you have to be so violent and, and kill people? Now, if, if you were... Because it's Satan. It's not God. It's well, Satan. Well, I, I know that, but I'm just... Yeah. Oh. I don't want to... 
Oh, all right. Yeah, because you'll have people waiting on you. <laughs> <laughs> Little red suits and pitchfork. <laughs> Get that guy. <laughs> I, I sat there and, and, you know, I thought about it a million times. Like, even the Christians used to kill people. Uh, and you wonder, if your God is so powerful, you shouldn't have to kill anybody. If, if you want to worship your, your God, worship your God, but don't make it a burden on anybody else. That's my point. You know, I mean, I'm a Christian. I believe in God. I think that I should have the right to practice my religion. <clears throat> but that shouldn't give me the right to shoot somebody or hang somebody or behead somebody because they disagree with me. You know, I mean, to me, it's how many, how much more can, do we need to realize we're all on this planet together? And I'm looking at the world now, Dave, and I'm saying to myself, it's going to get rough. NATO is now going after Russia. They're not playing around. They're going to go right after Russia. Now, they both have nuclear bombs. Israel has nuclear bombs, but they don't use them. They have nuclear missiles. If they wanted to, they could launch, and that'd be the end of it. But they don't. So I had kind of admire them. That tells me a lot about them. But what I'm saying is it's getting so bad now. It's spreading. Egypt is involved in it now. And, I, I, and people don't realize we're headed for World War III. I don't know if I'll, if I'll see the whole thing, but these are the seeds that have been sown. Mm -hmm. And that's the way it is. This, I mean... It's coming to that point where when you absolutely, oh, phone. Good afternoon. Welcome to Norm's mm -hmm. Friends. How are you today? I'm wonderful. It's the energy lady. How is everybody? I missed you last week. I was just going to say, what happened last week? I The energy lady must be out of town. Were you on your motorcycle? The energy lady's running all around the town, shopping and having a ball for herself. All right. Good for you. How do you like the weather the past few days, by the way? What a shocker. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, but then it rained in between, but it's still beautiful out. It is still beautiful out. Do you have a question or a comment for my wonderful guest? Well, he does beautiful painting and everything, and I like all the cards he's making. And You ought to see the one I got today. I just started it on my show today. I'm going to show it here whenever Dave has time. Pretty Okey soon. Okey. So what, what, what else is happening? What's happening? Yeah. Well, I had a, I celebrated the holiday. And yeah. that's good. Did you and all kinds of goodies. All right. And no barbecues? No barbecues? Uh, no, I did all homemade cooking. It's sunny, oh. sunny. All right. I love homemade I cooking. I had and I had mm. hot dogs and I had potato salad and I had... Oh, watermelon, and I had <laughs> wow. rolls and cake and ice cream and you name it. Wow, lucky you. You're fortunate. Oh, yeah. Do you have any buckwheat soup? Gonna keep my husband happy. That, that, that's right. <laughs> she didn't hear that one. No, you know what they say? Do a man's stomach is healthy food. Uh-oh. <laughs> See, and you know what you're doing. That's Energy how women lady. ply a man so they can get into his credit card. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. I don't want to get into my husband's credit card. Uh-huh. You wait till he falls asleep. <laughs> uh, yeah. Never. How could he fall asleep without sleeping with him? We have drones watching you, my dear. <laughs> well. It's okay. <laughs> Too funny. You can't catch me anywhere. So where are you going to take a vacation this summer or what? I don't know. Missing hit, hit and run or whatever. Hit and run. Watch out saying that. They're going to be watching you now. That's right. You're on drone. That way, oh. I'll be traveling like different places. Oh, oh okay. Well, when you know, you whatever said. Whatever I feel like doing, I'll do it. That, that's that. 
You can't go wrong like that. You can't go wrong like Boy, that. I got you stuck at words, don't I? Mm, not you right. what the energy lady does to you? See, that, that's because it's all that, that energy. It's so empowering, you know. It sort of it lightens up my aura and expands my aura. I guess it does. Yeah, it does. I came across my little tiniest, tiniest crystal ball. So tiny, you could just about see it. And, and where was it? With my other rocks. <laughs> How, how do you know that it's not a rock if it's so small? Oh, I know, because you know why? You can see right through it, and it's clear. <laughs> yeah, but you don't have any other rocks that are clear, even though they may be like... Like, I have an amethyst, and that's a pretty big rock, but you can see through it. It's clear. That's beautiful, too, the purple. Yeah. Yeah. What yeah, else? Amethyst is one of the cheapest stones you can ever get. Really? It's a beautiful stone, yes. Yeah, but they have great energy. Oh, yeah. not like me. Well, that's true. I meant for a, for a stone. For a stone, <laughs> it's got good energy. I have one on my nightstand because it, it makes your dream sort of nice and, you know, easy flowing. I don't need that to dream nice. Well, I don't either, but I've had woken up, you know, screaming from scary dreams, which I don't really like. Well, that's because you're running too much. Is that what it is? Yeah, you get too many things going all at once. Wow, and see, and here I am thinking that I'm sort of, you know, calming down a little now that I'm getting old. Now, now that I, okay, I am no, old. You don't know what old is until you're old. <laughs> he's got Lon Chaney Jr. in his closet <laughs> trying to get you're out. You're younger than I am. <laughs> that, I, I am, that's right, I am. I he's got am. the werewolf in his closet. He's got more than that in his closet. <laughs> <laughs> oh. He ain't going to tell you what he's got in his closet. You could never keep up with it. That's right. You'd have to come over and see for yourself. You mean you he's got Boris it. Karloff, too? <laughs> <laughs> you wouldn't believe it. I know. <laughs> Are you reading a card for me? Okay, I'll read one card because then I have stories I have to tell everyone. I know. All right. Well, naturally, we wouldn't think that the energy lady would get anything other than a very uplifting card. So what do we have? We have the six of rods. And, of course, what do you see on the highest rod? The, the, the wreath of victory. So there you have it. You're charging forward. You've already sort of had this little, I'll say goal, for lack of a better term. You have this little goal or something that you wanted to achieve, and you're just about there. You could see the end result even as you started, and you're just about there at, at the finish line. So you'll prevail. There you have it. Wow. <laughs> Wow, we! I love that one. Yeah, well, you know, I don't can't see you getting any like yucky card. Not that there's yeah. really yucky cards, but you know what I mean. That one's a nice uplifting yeah. card. Hey, I got company here that wants to talk to you. Uh, oh, all right, put them on. Hello, Dave. Hey. I need a reading today. Wow! All right, I'll do a card also. We'll see if it intertwines with, with the other card I just read, but let's see. You never know. Uh-oh, is that allergies or COVID? Nothing. Oh, I thought I heard you sniffle. No, I just come in the outside. I was just uh, oh. working in the yard. You're not going to believe this. It is intertwined. That's Paul Revere. It's the same card. This is Six of Rods. How do you like that? How about that? So it's the same thing. Imagine, so see, it is. This involves the both of you. You're on the same page. How can you go wrong with that? You're both easy to get along with. You both got all that positive energy. So that's the first time that's ever happened, ever. And I've been doing this for over 20 years. Imagine, that's the first time that's ever happened. Wow, imagine that. How's Anthony today? He's all right. He's, uh, he's hanging in there. 
got any good photos today? <clears throat> yeah, I got one painting I, I started <clears throat> that on my show today. And I've got that. It's not complete yet, but it's something uplifting. I got okay. a paint. I've got a paint. Uh, there you go. You keep was, okay, what? Okay, back to. Uh, I want to know how Gene is doing. What? What? Gene? Oh, Gina. Uh, right. I know she didn't call last week. Maybe she'll call. You know, Gina, my Medford girl. Oh. Uh, All right. Maybe she'll call. Now she got to straighten out that school system down there. That's right. I, I know. I know. Well, Is that's. going to come up here and straighten out this one. <laughs> I know. I know. Maybe that's why we haven't heard from her. Remember, she said she was in negotiations, so yeah. maybe next time we hear from her, she'll have some good news for us. All right. Okay. So, thank you very much for the reading, and uh, have a nice weekend. And thanks for calling. All, All right. right. Talk oh, to you. Wait a minute. Oh. Yet. Okay, I won't. Yeah. Happy, healthy, and strong, everybody. And stay safe and be happy. All Same right, and you. God bless. Thank you, energy and on lady. That note, I'm going, and Auntie, you can show me a beautiful painting. Okay. Oh. All right, thanks. Mm -hmm. Bye. Bye bye. So there you have it. Let's just do these, whatever you want to call them, interest. Well, they're sort of facts, because they are facts. Mm -hmm. All right, but so there's only five of them. And actually, it's the biggest lies. This a list of ten, but I only did five. It's the biggest lies Democrats tell about U.S. elections. And the source for this is the Federalist. No, it's not CNN. It's not MSNBC. It's the Federalist. All right. One, election integrity laws suppress voters. With their election machine that thrives off the insecure mail-in system threatened, Democrats have taken to dishonestly attacking GOP-backed election integrity laws. The most common of these smears is the debunked claim that voter ID laws suppress voters, especially those who aren't white. There's no evidence to support such assertions. And speaking of that, speaking of that, this Sunday, I don't know if you know it, but this Sunday, Mexico has its elections. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. it's, and it's this Sunday. It's only one day. And if you work on the, you, you know, the boss allows you to go vote. Right. Anyway, are you ready? Everyone who votes in Mexico, what do they have to show to vote? Photo ID. With, you, you're, with the address that's on the voting list. Right. Mansion. It's one day paper ballots. One day. But yet up here we need two months to count the votes. That's because I don't care what you say. They once the polls closed, they know who's voted and who hasn't, yeah. and they have to come up mm -hmm. with the mail-in ballots mm -hmm. so they can have the people who didn't vote, they'll vote the way they want them to vote. All right, so that's that. Here's uh, biggest lie number two. The 2020 election was the most secure in American history. <laughs> exactly. I know. What a joke that was. Yeah. From illegal election rule changes in Michigan and Pennsylvania, and I'm sure there were a few others. Maryland. To, right, to the unauthorized use of ballot drop boxes in Wisconsin, the 2020 election was fraught with mischief and irregularities. And biggest lie number three. Voter fraud doesn't exist. I didn't even write anything else down from that, but just that. Just in Pennsylvania, after the 2020 election, this would, and the Dems still, still argue there's no voter fraud. Pennsylvania, their, their uh, what do you call it, voter officials, right? Voter, voting officials, whatever they, you call them. Election commission. Right, election officials. They even said that um, non-citizens were voting. Now, if that's not voter fraud, and they even said it, but yet still they'll tell you there's no voter fraud. Plus, I read also, and I know it wasn't a lot, but, but it was only like two or three people 
voter that were born in the 1860s in <laughs> Philadelphia. I mean, like I said, it was only two or three, but still, I mean, no voter fraud. What's though. your name, sir? <laughs> Abraham Lincoln. Oh, no, hey, go no. ahead and vote. <laughs> no. Here's another one. Here's another, and it is a lie. A big, biggest lie number four. Election workers are under siege. As America edges closer to the 2024 election, Democrats are ramping up their attacks on election oversight. Regime-approved media outlets run article after article lamenting an alleged wave of threats <coughs> against election workers that they blame on Trump's 2020 election <laughs> criticism. And I can, that is a lie because I'm an election worker. I haven't had, got one threat yet. No. So, and finally, and this is, this is a big scam. Uh, biggest lie number five, ranked choice voting. Do you know anything about that? Ranked choice voting. Yeah, you end up, instead of voting once, rarely you end up voting five times. What, listen to it. Ranked choice voting is fair. It most certainly is not. Often referred to as rigged choice voting yeah. by its critics, ranked choice voting is a system whereby voters rank candidates in order of preference. So in other words, if there's, just say you're voting for school committee, just and there's 10 people on the ballot, right? Mm -hmm. And it says vote for six or even eight, right? Vote for eight. So you you vote for them in the order that you like them, right? Right. And so what happens if none of them gets, uh, if none of them, if no candidate receives more than 50% of the first cho choice votes in the first round of voting, the last place finisher is eliminated, and his votes are reallocated to the voter's second choice candidate which mm. is a joke. We'll just say three people are running for mayor, right? There's, yeah. right there. Um, this process continues until one candidate receives the majority of votes. Both, like I said, if there's three people vote, running for mayor, you vote your first choice, your second choice, and your third choice. That's three votes, not one. Right. So it is rigged. Anyway, that's the story. So do you want to explain this? Because then I have a couple of stories to tell. <laughs> but you want to show, I love this. Okay. I love the colors. And, of course, I love it because it's butterflies. I love butterflies. Oh, I think so. It's the color that gets me. I love the I color. Mean, there's so many that uh, I've started a lot, and I finally found my sketchbook with the colored butterflies that I started and didn't finish. Some <laughs> are close, so I'm going to go ahead and just do one page, finish, go to the next, and get them all done. Mm -hmm. yeah, this I'm, I plan on. Well, this is it. This is what I worked on today, and it's it's a butterfly on a. I don't like to use the word uh, surrealistic. Well, yeah, I guess I do. <laughs> Abstract is what uh, ah. I try to say away from. But by the time I'm done with this, it's going to have a lot of vegetation on the bottom. It's a vision that I had of nature, and I wanted the sky and, and, and a little bit of the sun and everything else. But I've decided that it's going to be kind of like a round circle and all this is flying out of it and spreading out. Oh, I like that, yeah. And I'm going to finish it instead of being so picky, picky, picky about it. Uh, I don't have anything against abstract. It's just that <clears throat> I don't do that many abstracts, but doing this right here kind of put me in a different attitude, so maybe I will do a couple abstracts and see how they, they play, because I've seen some beautiful work here in Manchester of, of abstracts. Surrealism, uh, I've done a couple paintings 
Uh, I like Salvador Dali a lot. And me. Uh, boy, that guy. <laughs> and guess who his hero was? Leonardo da Vinci. Wow. I mean, if you really look at the Last Supper that da Vinci painted, or, uh, well, da Vinci painted one, of course, but Salvador Dali did one, too, and it's just amazing. The flesh tones, uh, that's very, very important. That shows me this guy, he's above a lot of people, <laughs> he, <laughs> yeah. you know. He's somewhere in, uh, yeah, in his own little world, but that, but it's beautiful. But this, I want this to be lively, and I'll probably take it and, and have it made into a uh, greeting card, which... Because of our space limitations, I belong to the Bedford Crafters Guild, and <clears throat> we have our paintings and our meetings at, it's the old Bedford Library. It's well over 100 years old, but it's too small to handle all the paintings. Since they let artists and painters, <laughs> they were crafters, building everything from baby clothes to uh, jewelry and they do an amazing job there's some talented people out there and so they finally decided to let photographers in mm -hmm. then a couple of years later they let people like me in that want to paint <laughs> and uh, you have to get juried and uh, I enjoy it it's just to the point now where I think that painting and Things that, that come from the human, before they're all AI, and before they're all robotic, you know, I, I, I believe that uh, if you can paint, paint, and it's human expression, and it's one of the most valuable, <clears throat> viable things you have in your life. You know, it, it's, uh, to me, I'm, I'm lucky at my age. Good afternoon. Welcome to Norm's Friends. How are you today? Not too bad. Good afternoon, guys. Good Hi, afternoon. Mary. Cruising with Mary tomorrow, 5 to 6 p.m. Same mm -hmm. time, same place, same different same day. <laughs> That's right. Same bad channel. <laughs> Mary, do you have any guests tomorrow? Uh, he was supposed to come in. Uh, he called up. He forgot about it. He has to be at a Bedford I don't know if it's a baseball, whatever they have, he has to be there to, to announce it. Oh. Uh, yeah. Oh, so wow. Well. Yeah, that's okay. So we made another appointment for him, so that's okay. Uh, hey, Mary, guess who I saw yesterday? Who's that? Brendan. Oh, yeah? He said, I would like to come back on the show. You guys probably wondered why I haven't. Yeah. He's, he said, I've been going through a very, very tough time. Yeah, I know he has. So... You know, he that's said okay. he, I, I told him, to, you know, anytime he can, give a call, and he knows he's always welcome. Oh, yeah. Now, that guy's talented. <laughs> oh, gosh. He yeah. plays guitar. I mean, he's, yeah. he's talented. Oh, the one that comes on with his mother? Y yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, he's very yeah. talented, that guy, very well. Did you hear what I said about the mayor? Yes, I did. I, I, I am going to go see him. I, I just got to pick out a time, find out when he's in the office, but I figured I'd give it a try. Yeah, hey, it doesn't hurt. No. It doesn't you know. hurt to try. Because I know, you know? He, he has, he said he has ideas that will work, and he seems like he's got a lot of things going on for the homeless. <clears throat> because yeah. it's getting worse. It's, you know, it's, it's kind of hard because mm -hmm. You have a lot of them, which I think it's wrong, that coming from Nashville. Nashville gives them tickets, and Maine, Maine has been proven, sends them down here to Manchester. Why can't other towns take care of their own people? But they don't. They send them here. It makes it hard for everybody here right. to try to take care of everybody that, that needs and wants help. Well, mm. they send them here because it's, mm. you know, it's the population center, so that, and they there sort of go. blend right in without blending, if you know yeah, what I mean. it's not right, yeah. you know? Exactly, but, you know, yeah. send them on the bus, dump them off downtown. Yeah. You know, and, you know. That's been proven. Yeah. That's happened. Yeah, you're, you're on your own. Yeah, Amazing. so maybe just 
this weekend there's no guests, so maybe uh, Anthony, we can get back to it this weekend on Thursday about it. You mean about talking about the homeless? Yeah. Yeah, let's do. We'll finish it up this weekend. Yeah. Stuff. Yeah. Know. I'll yeah. see what I can do on the mayor side. Uh, maybe not this week, but I'll see what you know what I can do. Yeah. Because I gotta go in and find out when he's usually there, and this and that. But I just think, you know, tell him there's no politics involved. No, no, because I don't want no politics. Right. On the show. It's just, as mayor, what do you plan to do and get a straight answer? Yeah, I would like the same same answer that you got. What's yeah. going to happen? Right. With these people. That's a good one. And stuff, you know? So, what well, you been yeah. up to, Dave? Anything new? No, I'm working on it. I have stories because you wouldn't believe what happened to me last week. Oh, he fell off his horse. <laughs> no. So... Last week, well, the, 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 this is all between Sunday and Friday, but Friday I had my first colonoscopy, so that ends the week, but the stuff that happened in between, I've, I think it's funny. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I'm going to hang up and I want to listen to it. All right, sounds good. Hmm. Thanks for calling, Mary. All right, okay. okay. See you tomorrow. Yep. See you tomorrow. Right. And if she's listening, I did want to say no cars today, but... I've gotten a thing, Mary, with one of your cats, for some reason, that they're just not themselves, and it's nothing, no big deal. I'm getting a sense mm -hmm. sort of all of a sudden one of them is finicky about eating, and they're just, you know how cats are. It's, it's really them just testing mama to see if they can manipulate you. That's all it is. Anyway, so are you ready for the story? Mm -hmm. All right. Well... I had a colonoscopy, my first one, on Friday, by the way, so I'll tell you the result before the story, but, and just so you know, everything was all right, not then, everything looked normal, so that was that. But anyway, so, last Sunday, you have to start, have you ever had one? What? Colonoscopy? Yeah, I think so. Well, you got to start that low fiber diet on five days before, right? Yeah. So y'all, you, you can eat like fish. There's a whole bunch of stuff you can eat, but I know you can eat fish because I had, I think I had uh, Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday, I had swordfish, so I didn't really mind. <laughs> swordfish, I've never had that. Oh, I love swordfish. It's thick. It's like, yeah. it's the steak of fish, I guess. It's really good. And then I had a couple of days for like for lunch, I just did a can of tuna and mixed mayonnaise. Mayo. But anyway, so that's that. So... I get up Wednesday. Wednesday is the last day that you can eat, right? So it tells you you can have a light breakfast, you can have a light lunch, and you can have a light supper, which I laugh because every meal I have is light, if mm -hmm. you know what I mean. I don't over it, you know. I mean, if I'll have a piece of steak like that and then a, a little bit of peas and whatever, applesauce. Well, you are kind of chubby. <laughs> Anyway. I mean, look at me. I'm overweight. <laughs> right, yeah. So anyway, so Wednesday, right, so I go to take a shower, and I look to, I'll show everybody where it is. I'm, I'm not going to show you the exact thing, but it's right here, all right? Right here, exactly where I'm doing it, that wide. So it's about that wide. I get up, well, on Wednesday morning, and I see, a, you know, a couple of red, just marks there. And so I'm thinking... If anybody, everyone out there who has a cat knows the story, you're in bed at night, the cat jumps up on the bed and walks over you, right? So I'm thinking maybe when he, he walked over me last night, he sort of slid, and then you know their claws to get you. And it, so that was that. I didn't think anything of it. Of course, you wake up Thursday. Thursday is liquid only. <laughs> liquid only, right? So I get up that day and I said, oh, black coffee. All I could have was black coffee. I don't really like black coffee, but I had it anyway. Mm -hmm. Look, it's so bitter. Anyway, and then what else did I have? I think I had orange juice. You could have on. Could you have orange juice that day? No, it's just clear. I could have lemonade, so I had mm -hmm. lemonade. Anyway, so 
I go to, you know, I'm getting ready to take a shower. I look, and then I look down, and there's a couple more red marks. But so I feel them, and they're bumps, right? They're bumps. Mm -hmm. So I go, oh, no. Right? <laughs> I'm thinking to myself, at this stage of the game, I'm this old. I'm thinking to myself, because <laughs> I never had either before. I'm thinking herpes or poison ivy. So my PCP, the the medical billing that he's in there, if you're a patient there, they have a walk-in clinic. So I go to the walk-in clinic, and you get to see a nurse. So <laughs> I go in there. So the nurse says, oh, because when you fill out the thing, I just said a rash. I didn't know what it was. So she says, oh, you have a little rash. I go, yeah. And I told her, I said, it's about the size of my thumb. That's, you know. So she says, all right. So she says, well, what does it look like? So I said, I'll show you. So as I'm, you know, dropping my drawers far, I'm telling her I, the same thing. I said, you know, I said, I don't know if it's herpes or poison ivy because I've never had either one of them, you know. And I, she was laughing. I said, to think if, that I would get herpes at this age, right? I mean, yeah. Anyway, so I show her. The first thing she says to me is, are you ready? That's shingles. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. So she gave me a prescription, but I'm... I haven't taken it because on the prescription it says may cause drowsiness, do not drive. Yeah. So I don't want anything. But anyway, to make a long story short, so that was Thursday. So for my colonoscopy, I just taped it over. I remember one of my neighbors, she's panicking. You better call them, blah, 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 that's contagious. And I, I, told, I said, you don't know what you're talking about. It's not con the only, um, the only people that it would be contagious to is someone who's never been vaccinated for chicken pox. Hmm. That's the only, so, you know, a little kid or something, I don't know. But anyway, so that was that. But it turns in, and, you know, talk about being blessed if it was somewhere else, because it's just like just now, sometimes you touch it, and, man, it stings like you wouldn't believe, and not all the time. So I can imagine, like if it's on your back, like I said, if it's on your back, if you sleep on your back, no, you're not sleeping. Yeah. But it's not like a constant. Or then all of a sudden, you get a, a throbbing pain, a throb, and it will only be like one or two throbs, but intense. And it goes below your knee, but that mm -hmm. was for the first few days. But before then, which I didn't realize, it started at like that Sunday night, the same day I had to start the low fiber diet, right? The Sunday before the colonoscopy. I was, was near the end of my shift at work and I got this pain like you would not believe from like my groin down to my knee on my left side only. And by, oh, by the way, if you get shingles, I did some research and plus the nurse told me this, if we get shingles, it's only on one side of your body, you only get it on one side of your body. So well, I got it on my left. I don't know why. Hmm. But then the other thing I did read, because I was reading like how long it lasts. It can last from two to five weeks till it's all, you know, the scabs, it scabs mm. up and blah, blah, blah. Hey, if it's, so, only, if it's only on the left, that means a lot of Democrats are going to get shingles. <laughs> yeah. So anyway. <clears throat> you got to have a sense of humor about you it. You do have to have a sense of humor mm. about it. Anyway. <laughs> I have a quick little joke that you brought that up. But anyway, I post I saw on Facebook. But anyway, so I did a little research when I was looking to see how long it lasts. It also said, because, you know, they tell you, some of them say you're going to get it again. If you get it once, you're going to get it again. Mm -hmm. Just so you know, everyone, I did the research. If you get shingles, yeah, you can get it again, but it's only between 1 and 3% of the people that get shingles will get a recurrence. So mm. rest assured. Low. Right. Yeah. Very low. So and that it'll was be a... on your right side this time. <laughs> <laughs> so that was the story. But then, so I'm doing the clear liquid. I could not believe how horrible and disgusting that prep stuff is that you have to drink. <gasps> they give you this stuff, you mix it, well, and it's the funniest thing. I was thinking of mixing it with lemonade because everybody kept saying how nasty it was, right? Mm. So I was thinking of mixing it with lemonade. I don't know what made me mix it with water. 
first of all, the smell is atrocious. The smell is enough to gag you. So what I would do is I'd hold, I'd take in a deep breath, right? Hold your nose. Hold my nose and take a sip. I drank it real quick. And all I can say is from the first sip till I finished it, it was like, I'm so glad I didn't mix it with lemonade because there was no way I would have even been able to take one sip. It, it was one of the most disgusting things I ever tasted in my life. Anyway, so that was that. And then you have to wake up. That They give you two different things, right? One pouch. And then you have to wake up six hours before your schedule for your colonoscopy and drink. It's two pouches that you mix together, right? Mm. They equal the same size as the other one. So you mix it together. That one was even more gross. It was grosser. <laughs> than the, and I'm drinking it, and I did the same thing. I'm drinking it quick because that's, a, oh, it was absolutely disgusting. So I'm drinking it. I wasn't even done, and I can feel my stomach. Yeah. <laughs> I go, oh, this isn't a good sign. Anyway. So I finished drinking it real quick, and I'm sitting there, and I'm, I did. I was just telling my, tell him as soon as I finished it, I'm telling myself, I have to puke. I'm going to have to puke. So I'm sitting there, and I'm going to say, I don't know, 10 minutes, maybe 15 minutes went by, and I puked. <laughs> but, and I wasn't going to tell him that. I wasn't going to tell them the next day because after going through that, uh, all I, I would have cried if they said, we can't do your colonoscopy today. Right? <laughs> after going all through all that. Again. Yeah, no. So yeah. anyway, well, the good news, is, the good mm. news and the bad news is, oh, the good news is um, the, well, you, for follow-up, the good news is for follow-up, I don't have to go have another one for five years. Hmm. The bad news is I don't have to have another colon. I have to have another colonoscopy for five years. I hope they develop something else by then. Yeah, <laughs> really. I mean, can, I, you would think, you know, you would think these scientists they claim to know all this stuff. You would think they could like develop something that could flavor this thing so it's not sickening. Yeah. Well, <clears throat> I'm supposed to. Uh Make an appointment for a CT scan. I haven't had one in years, a couple of years anyway. Mm -hmm. So I got to do that. On your brain? No, it's my lungs. Oh. My brain's gone. <laughs> I traded it in. <laughs> hey, I, this is a whole quick aside, but I have a question for you. Can you pull that up and turn it around? Please. What are these? What are those? These go in here. Oh, oh, okay. So, oh, oh. oh so, to hold it. Yeah. Oh, all right, thanks. Yep. I didn't know. Yep. See, I knew it was some trick of the trade thing. Mm -hmm. Imagine. No, it just keeps the frame straight. Ah. Put these in there. And, yeah. Oh, all right, thank you. But it's going to be, a, I can tell it's going to be a good one. It's going to be good. Well, I love it already. I, the colors, I love the way it's just the colors all come. It's, uh, yeah, the more I look at it. It's but see, to me, it's like, see that, whatever you call it, but all in there, that's like coming from another room. Right, and it's all coming out. Yeah. You know, I'm going to have another butterfly just like this right over here. Yeah. So you have two of them. Then I may have, I'm going to have some vines with leaves, and what else am I going to have there? I thought about even putting a little waterfall in there. I don't, I don't know you. Well, you know me, I like all that stuff that you mentioned, because to me it's all uplifting and positive and spiritual and <clears throat> nature, nature, which is spiritual, so. Yeah, it's nature. Yeah. I mean, face it. I used to enjoy, for years and years and years up north, I'd go into the middle of the woods. Where's up north? New Hampshire? Yeah. Oh. And uh, just sit back and watch what happens. You'd see owls, you would see hawks, 
because there's no roads, there's nobody driving around, mm -hmm. and it's 45,000 acres all fenced in. And there's all the roads are dirt roads. They don't have any paved roads. Well, they may now, but back then they weren't because they they want everything just natural. But these dirt roads are natural. I mean, in Manchester, yeah. you know. Yeah, but not like these. Well, no, I'm mm -hmm. sure. But down where we, if you're coming from Londonderry up mm -hmm. 28, there's dirt roads. Oh. Yeah, I was just mm -hmm. sitting in the middle of the woods, and my only fear was I'd run into a bear, which I did, but I was far enough away that I ran to the truck. <laughs> because when I looked up in the tree, there was a cub, and there were all these wild boar trying to wait for it to come down, with it, so they'd kill wow. it and eat it. And then all of a sudden I heard this noise, all these limbs breaking and snapping, and my wife is on the f horn, just pressing on the horn, and I look and I see Mama coming, and I'm going, uh-oh. That's not a good sign. No, she came through that wood. She was huge. And she, she might have thought it was you going after Cubby. Well, she saw the boar. I'm running. I had a 35 millimeter camera <laughs> around my neck. I'm running to the truck. I jumped in the back yeah. end of it. I mean, I thought she was chasing me, but then I realized if she was, she would have caught me because they can run 40 miles an hour on flat land. But I was going up a grade like this, running up, but she didn't go after me. She went after the boar because yeah. I could hear them squealing running away from her. Of course I would too. I mean, she was big. Big, big, big. Well, you ran from her, so hey. Yeah. I was no about mess. from here to the other side of the street from the bear. Oh, wow. And that's, that's a, that that's was close good, enough. It is, but it's a good head start. Yeah. And I'm just glad that she didn't get me. <laughs> Imagine. I went well, back. you're so skinny. If you're running, when they get mm -hmm. that close, just turn sideways, and she had a miss. Skinny, you. I'm thin. <laughs> <laughs> but I just, you know, an animal like that, Mama. All animals are like yeah. that. Bears, wolves. No, that's the way it is. We have to look wrap. What See, is it? We have to wrap. We so, do. Yeah, look. Uh-oh. We only got it like a minute or so. All right, so real quick, Anthony Williams, the best artist east of the Mississippi, hands down. <laughs> Make no doubt about it. Check out his work. You'll be impressed. You'll buy it. It's, it's fantastic. I'm David B., the readings guy. Here comes the... Um, <laughs> <laughs> what was that all about? The next guys are coming in anyway. I'm David B., the reading guy, 603-404-9338. Biffit at yahoo.com. Please, please, please remember two things. Again, you can't be dumb if you want to be free. And more importantly, you are a winner.